Hey, this is Math 2, Unit 1. This is the review worksheet for this unit. And today I'm going to go ahead and just go through the odd number solutions here with you guys. Um, they're very similar, but odds and evens. So you should be able to use what you learned from one section to do the next one. So here we go. Looking at number one, first of all, we have 4x minus 105 degrees over here, and we have 450 minus 6x degrees over here. And these two angles, because they are going to be on the on the outside of this line here. These two angles are actually equal to each other. So they are going to be alternate exterior angles and they're equal. Because they are equal, we can then set up the equation to say 4x minus 105 is equal to 450 minus 6x. So with that equation in place, I can now begin to solve for the value of x. To do that, I'm going to add 6x here and add a 6x here. So I now have 10x on one side. And I'm going to go ahead and move the regular number here, uh, the integer, uh, by adding 105 here and add 105 here. So 10x is going to equal 555. Oops, sorry. Yeah, 555. So we add that up there. Loads of fun. Nice big number. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 10 in order to get the x by itself. So x is going to equal 55.5. Kind of a strange little number there, but that's okay. You're going to find that on this little review. There are lots of numbers that are just a little different. You might be expecting a whole number, but you're in math 2 now, so it's not always going to work out that way. Number two, which I won't do, is the same setup. Again, we have alternate exterior angles, which means these are going to be equal to each other. You just have to deal with a fraction there. So know what you learn. <laughs> Use your fraction knowledge to be able to get that x away from the 8. So think of it this way. This is really also written as 1 8 x. And to get the x away from the 8, you would multiply by the reciprocal. So keep that in mind when you go to that problem. All right, number three. Let's take a look at one that has some fractions with it. You get alternate exterior angles, so these are going to be set equal to each other. So we have 5 eighths x minus 81 is equal to 3 eighths x minus 1. All right. So because I have a 5 eighths and a 3 eighths, I'm going to go ahead and move this one over to there because I'm going to subtract 3 eighths x from this side and subtract 3 eighths x from this side. Because they have the same denominator, I can just do 5 minus 3 is 2. So I know I have a 2 eighths x so far. I'm going to move the whole number, 81, over to here by adding 81 to both sides. So a negative 1 plus an 81 is going to be equal to 80. Now to get rid of this bit here, I could reduce it first of all, just to make it a little easier on myself. 2 eighths can also be known as reduced to 1 fourth, okay, because there are 4 twos and 8. And now I can multiply both sides by the reciprocal and multiply by 4 over 1. And in this case here, the 4s now cancel, the 1s now cancel, and I'm left with just the x on the side. And over here I have 80 times 4, which is 320 for my solution for number 3. All right. Similar idea for number four, we're not going to do this, except now you're dealing with decimals. So be careful with the decimals when you do your work there. You will end up with some decimal type of equations where you have to divide by, by some decimals. So you'll have to you know, move your decimals over the right way in order to make the division happen. But you'll end up with an answer that is a decimal. Number five, we have a radical here, and we have a 28, and we can break the 28 into a four and a seven. I can break the 4 into a 2 and a 2. At this point, I have a little group of 2's there. When I have 2 of them, it means I can stick them outside the radical. So I can write down plus or minus, plus or minus 2 from this one here. And I can add another 2 from the out to the outside. And I still have a 7 inside there. So 2 times 2 is 4. So this becomes plus or minus 4 root 7 for number 5 look at number 7. 7 we have 7 root 52. I can take the 52 and break that apart. That is a 2 times a 26. 
If you ever see a number you're not sure, hmm, I don't know what goes in 52, and it's even, break it, divide, divide it by 2 first and see what happens. So I get 2 times 26, and 26 can also become 2 times 13. 13 won't break apart anymore, so I can stop there. But in the meantime, I have two twos, so I can put one of them on the outside. So 7 times 2 goes on the outside, outside, and on the inside I still have root 13. Now let's clean it up a little bit. 7 times 2 is 14, and I still have a root 13. So that becomes my answer for number 7. Number 9. Similar idea here. We're going to break this apart. This becomes a 2 and a 5. 15 becomes a 3 and a 5. And of course, I still just have a 5. All right? That's what I have. Any partner grouping things? Sure. I have two 5s there, which means one of those can go on the outside. These guys are all by themselves, so they stay on the inside. So I'll put the 5 on the outside. On my inside, I still have a 2 times a 5 times a 3. And this becomes 2 times 5 is 10, times 3 is 30. And so we have 5 root 30. And that's my solution for number 9. Number 11. Another one of these crazy big numbers here, 252. I don't know. So I divided it by 2 and made it 2 and 126. 126 is still a pretty big number, so I divided it by 2 and I had 2 and 63. 63 is looking a little more familiar to me. I know that is a 7 and a 9. And 9, of course, becomes a 3 and a 3. So it took a while to factor that one down there. But on the outside, I still have a negative 9. Now let's look for some partners here. Here's a group of 2s, so I can put a 1, 2 on the outside. Here's a pair of 3s, so I can put a pair of 3 on the outside. And what I have left in the middle still, I still have 1, 7, so there it is. And so I multiply these together, and I have a 9 times a 2 times a 3. And so 9 times 2, well, it's this way. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 9 is 54. So I'm going to do negative Oop, ran out of room here. Let's go here. Negative 54 root 7 is a solution that I got there. All right, number 13. 13, we have 3 root 6 times 3 root 6. So I have a 3 on the outside. Check. Another 3 on the outside. Check. And on the inside, I have a 6 and a 6. I don't need to break that down anymore because I have a partner pairing there. So I can put the two, 6 on the outside, so it looks like this, 3 times 3 times a 6, 3 times 3 is 9, times 6 is 54 again, and that's my solution for number 13. Alright, let's go to the next page. On the next page, first you have this picture. Let's see, get up here for you. Let's zoom out just a bit. And it wants us to use this figure to answer several questions related to the figure. 14 it wants to know the vertex and the sides of angle 3. Well, this is angle 3 right here, right in that space there. And so our vertex is going to be the point where it comes together. That would be B. And the sides are these things right here. So we have BF and we also have BC. All right? So when you look here, the next one, number 15, name a linear pair. A linear pair are uh, two angles that are side by side. So you could say you have angle 1 and angle 2. Or you could also say angle 2 is next to angle, uh, angle 3. For 17, we'll look at just the odd ones here still. What angle is adjacent to FBD? Adjacent means next to. So here's FBD. <laughs> And so what's next to that is this one here, which we would call angle EBF. All right, number 19. Find angle ABF, ABF, so this whole thing here, if FBC is 48. So if this is 48, what is the rest of it, basically? Well, the rest of it is going to be what's left after 180 because the entire thing is 180 degrees. It's a line there, right? So we take 180 minus 48, and we would discover that what's left is 130 degrees. So we'd say 132 degrees is what ABF is going to be.
All right. Moving down, we have this interesting shape right here. And it wants to know a couple of things. Number one, 21, uh, sorry, 21 says corresponding angles. What are corresponding angles? Well, corresponding angle is, and we can just draw this for you here real quick. So a corresponding angle means I have uh, two parallel lines, right? Two parallel lines. And then I have a line that is traversed that goes across like this. And they're corresponding because they line up like the same way on the same side of the traverse across the two parallel lines. So it'd be like here and here. That would be considered a corresponding angle. So when I look up here, here's a parallel line, parallel line, here's a traverse. So a corresponding angle could be something like 5 and 8, right? Those go together there. There are other ones too. I, what I would recommend here when you look at this shape to find the other ones, it might be a good idea just to turn your paper a little bit so you can maybe visually see that, oh, it works the same way. So when I look here, here I have two parallel lines, and here's a traverse. So of course my angle here could be 2 and 7, or I could say 3 and 8. So it's different solution sets for this. So it just depends on what you kind of visually see for how that could work out there. So 3 and 8 could work, 2 and 7 could work as another choice there. For alternate interior angle, an alternate interior angle means I have the parallel lines, all right, I have the traverse here, and alternate interior means that we are interior means means inside the parallel lines, okay? So I'm going to be inside the parallel lines, and I have an interior line here, and an interior, sorry, angle here. And they're alternating because they're alternating the sides of the traverse. So when I look up on this case here, I might notice that here's my parallel line, here's my traverse. These two angles are on the inside of the two parallel lines, and they alternate what side they're on. Left side, right side, left, that kind of thing. So I could say 6 and 8 alternate there. Again, if I want to flip this around, I could look at a different angle and say, well, here are two parallel lines, and here's the traverse. So alternating angles, left side, right side, I could say 4 and 2, or 2 and 4. doesn't matter. But those angles here are both on the inside of these parallel lines, right? They're on the inside of these lines. So that's what makes them interior. So I could write down 2 and 4. When it comes to vertical, the vertical ones are straight across from each other. So they're paired up like this. A 1 and 2 could work. A 4 and 7. 6 and 5. 9 and 8. Those are all good options for what a vertical angle one could be, right? All right, alternate exterior angles. Similar to the alternate interior, except now I take my parallel lines and my traverse. What I'm looking for alternate means left side, right side, but now we're going to be outside of the parallel lines. So this would be inside, interior, right? And exterior means I'm outside of those lines there. So in this case, what's outside of the lines here, I could look and I could have alternate. I could have 9 and 5 because we're both on the outside. And that's uh, alternating right, left, I'm on the outside. Over here, I could have 1 and 7. And that could be another choice, too, for what else could work there. Same side interior. So same side interior or consecutive interior means that Oh, did, I, did I make that up there? Okay, cool. So we're good there. Alternate exterior, there's a picture again in case you missed that. Same side interior means that I have here my parallel lines. I have my traverse there. And my same side interior means that I'm not alternating. I'm on the inside, and I'm on the inside, and I'm on the same side of the traverse. All right, so up here, here's my parallel lines. I have my traverse. These numbers, 7 and 8, are both inside the parallel lines and on the same side, right, consecutive interior of that traverse there. So I could say 7 and 8 could work there for what that could look like. Okay? And there's other options too. 2 and 3 work, 6 and 2 work, so there's other things you could do there. All right, moving on to the next odd question. We're going to number 27. 
and 27, we have this same shape, and you're going to use this shape for all of the questions, all right? So I just usually drew, I drew a quick sketch when I needed to here. But let's take a look. Angle 2, it says, is 60 degrees. Angle 3 is 80 degrees, and now we have to find numbers 1 and 4. So if I was to redraw this here just quickly, like so, I know that angle 2 is 60. We said that angle 3 over here is 80. And what's left? Because it's a triangle, this would have to add up to 180. So 80 plus 60 is 140. So what's left is 180 minus 140 for 40 degrees. So that's going to be the measurement of angle 1 is 40 degrees. No problem. So we'll jot that down right there. Now this becomes a supplementary angle. So what's left for this one? If that's 40 degrees right there, then what's left is 180 minus 40 degrees, which is 140 degrees. That becomes 140. What they want you to notice there, of course, is that that's 140. That means that the sum of 2 and 3 will always be equal to that one. Let's take a look at number 29. Our last one we'll take a look at. Same picture. So we break it apart like this. It says angle 1 is 75, and angle 3 right here is 20. And it wants us to find angle 2 and angle 4. All right? Those are the ones we're trying to find out. So this angle, again, is supplementary. So to find angle 4, we would do 180 minus 75, and we end up with 105 is the measurement of angle 4. No problem there, so we have 105. And to find the inside of the triangle, we'd add up what we do know. 75 plus a 20 is 95. And we'll take that sum and we'll subtract it from 180 because the sum of the angles inside the triangle will be 180. And so we end up with 85 is what's left for the measurement of angle 2 is 85 degrees. All right, so that's my two answer sets there. You do something very similar for numbers 28 and 30. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit with your review worksheet. Good luck on your upcoming tests. I hope you do a great job.